Matthew chapter number 20. If you really want to bless your mama, be an answer to her prayer. How can I do that? Repent of your sins. Get water baptized in Jesus' name. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, evidenced by speaking with other tongues, and then live for Him. Matthew 20, verse number 20. Then came to Him the mother of Zebdi's children with her sons, worshiping Him and desiring a certain thing of Him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? And she answered unto him, Grant that these, my two sons, may sit the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they say unto him, We are able. Jesus wanted to present a fair warning to an ambitious mama who had high hopes for her sons. He wouldn't be God if he didn't warn us when we're praying dangerous. You really don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink my cup and to be baptized with my baptism? Had it have been any lesser character, they might would have said, well, let me think about it. I often have people tell me, let me pray about it, when that really means, let's change the subject. But they answered unanimously, we are. My subject this morning is, we are able. Let's join together and ask God's blessing upon his word. We love you. We thank you, Lamb of God. We believe and trust in you. We know, oh God, that you're in our midst. And we pray that we will be able to go the distance and allow our prayer to push us and to maximize our efforts in jesus name we pray everybody said amen turn to somebody nearby shake their hand greet them you're near a mother wish her happy mother's day you may be seated mother of James and John has caught a lot of flack down through the ages. She uh, has been depicted oftentimes as a pushy parent. Perhaps some of you have been raised by overly ambitious mothers and dads who wanted you to succeed so that they could live vicariously through your success. Some of you teenagers or maybe 20-somethings may have been raised by soccer moms. Not so sure. We might have some soccer moms in here. I had a soccer mom. You talk out of turn, you get socked. <laughs> you don't pick your clothes up on a bedroom floor, you go get socked. I think it's a bit unfair to accuse the mother of James and John 
with being overly zealous for zealousness sake or to make the assumption that all she was interested in was status and position had she only been ambitious for position for her sons in this coming kingdom of Jesus when the stern warning was issued off the lips of the master you don't know what you're asking for you able to drink the cup that I drink are you able to be baptized with the baptism that I'm to be baptized with she would have picked up the cue and would have retreated back into anonymity and would have taken her sons back with her but she planted her feet and this was what I love about this woman she took a position based on a principle since somebody is going to be closer to Jesus than others why can it not be my two boys and when Jesus tried to discourage her from her effort and dream it only made her all the more determined and the beauty of this was she wasn't speaking for them she was speaking with them because they replied together she didn't say they are able she said we or they said we are able my 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 that tells me that the work of motherhood had already been well underway and these young fellas had already been conditioned to reach for the max when it comes to the things of God and once they positioned themselves they became sort of like uh, the stone in what the sling was to the stone in David's hand so were these two boys amen slung as it were into a mighty destiny by the prayer power of an interceding mama yes. praise God many of us are where we are today because we had a parent a mother or a father bold enough to pray things into our future that perhaps we were not willing to pray ourselves and so we are here tonight today hands in the air amen voices lifted hearts on fire because somebody saw greatness in our future and saw closeness with God when we maybe wanted to drift away aren't you glad today that you didn't get here by yourself but somebody <laughs> prayed somebody prayed for you praise God preacher was teaching on the origin of man and cited the scripture for dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return and the little boy in the congregation was watching and listening intently and after the service he went up and pulled on the preacher's coat said said pastor I want to tell you something I want to tell you something he said what is it son he said you were talking about from dust we came and to dust we shall return is that really true he said yes it's true he said well I looked under my bed somebody's either coming or going <laughs> As I look out over this congregation, somebody's either coming or they're going. Somebody's either getting closer to God. And with every passing day, they're pressing their spirit up against the limits of every opportunity to get as close to God. They want, they're ready to shout.
They're ready to pray. They're ready to intercede. They're ready to witness. They're ready to worship. They're ready to engage themselves in the word of God. They're ready to forgive. They're ready to love. They're ready to hope and dream. And then at the same time, there's others looking for a way out. I don't know whether you're coming or whether you're going, but I want you to know something. Amen. Whether you're coming or whether you're going, you're going to have to get past a mama's prayer. You're going to have to get past a daddy's prayer. You're going to have to get past the preacher's prayers. So in the beginning and i think the book of genesis lays for us a paradigm i've always been intrigued by bridges bridges have always been a subject of interest to me because i don't know it's a marvel to me how that the calculations were made where especially when you deal with suspension bridges that are held up by massive cables and columns what i notice about suspension bridges is they'll have these big columns and then from those columns they'll have these cables going in various uh, patterns and the weight of that road over the water or canyon transferred somehow to the column that holds it all up well in many ways this is the way the book of genesis functions as an anchor for a lot for many and perhaps even most of the themes that you read in the word of god particularly the themes of parenthood and fatherhood and motherhood and what i noticed in the book of genesis is while adam slept after Adam had spent considerable time naming animals, the Bible says, and the search was made for a companion for Adam, but none could be found. And God caused a deep sleep to come over Adam. And he took from his side, I'm so glad he didn't take a head bone. <laughs> And I'm so glad he didn't take a foot bone either. But he took a bone from the side of Adam. So that, not that he would over dominate and crush her. Or that she would over dominate and crush him. But that they could be side by side partners in life. Yes. In child rearing. In developing the family structure and in doing the will of God. I read something from Dr. Georgia Perdom, and she said this, and if you would just be patient with me to just share this with you. The skeletal system is one of the most underappreciated organ systems in our bodies. Bones are usually considered rather static and not to contribute much to overall health. However, bones are some of the most dynamic organs in the body and constantly change to help the body deal with stresses that are encountered. Ribs. Now when I say ribs, I'm gonna make men hungry. <laughs> But you're just going to have to wait and then you're probably on Mother's Day, your wife, you know, they go eat ribs because we want them to most of the time. So it may not be ribs today, guys. But if it is, God bless you. But that's not the rib I'm talking about. Ribs are amazing bones. Not only for physical roles they play in our bodies, but also for their connection to, to God's word in the book of Genesis. Now, both male and female have 12 ribs. I know you've heard it said that men have one less rib. This is not so. They both have the same. Now, Adam had one less rib for a while. Thank God he didn't transfer that to the rest of us. I need everything I got. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if the standard is not enough as it is. Well, I say Adam had one less rib for a while and this is what I mean by this. The rib is the only bone 
that has regenerative properties. Whenever there is a need to do a bone transplant, the place where the surgeon goes to get the bone for grafting is often to the rib. I don't understand all there is to know about it, but there is a casing around the rib bone. That if the rib is extracted and the casing is left in place, that this bone will actually regrow itself back in place. So I say Adam had one less rib for a while until his body regenerated the rib bone. The Bible says that the woman was taken from this part of Adam's body. The rib is the only bone that continues to produce red marrow well into adult age. Red marrow is from where red blood comes from. Let me tell you mamas why we love you so much. It's because, uh, amen, there's lots of forgiveness flowing through you. Just like the blood of Jesus uh, is symbolic of forgiveness the fact that you've been that you've been constructed out of the very instrument that produces red blood let me say this forgiveness is a blessed characteristic of mamas you'll find men that hold grudges you'll find brothers who oftentimes won't speak to brothers you will find men who have a grudge against men but it is very rare that you'll ever find a mama who quit conversing amen with their children because there's something about it mama can bury the hurt mama can bury the pain she can bury the injustice and she can return love come on give moms a hand today the ribs protect the inner organs the lungs and the heart we know that the ribs are attachment points for the chest muscles that are involved in respiration. The reason why people die when they're crucified isn't that they can't inhale, it's that they can't exhale. They can't exhale because when you stretch the, the muscles of the ribs with the weight of one's body on their wrists, they have no way they can take air in, but they can't take air out. And so they suffocate just as if you couldn't breathe in. Same difference if you can't exhale. Thank God, hallelujah, for the spiritual movement in a church. Oh, so much to pray in mamas. Come on, man, let's not fool ourselves. Most times, much of the times, women are the first responders to the unction of the Holy Ghost. And we ought to thank God for that. For sensitivity. For keenness. For intuition. For the things that make them who they are. And when Adam woke, he looked at Eve and he said, Woman. <laughs> But the word woman comes from the word womb man. David, I mean, uh, Adam apparently lived long enough to be able to see the cycles of reproduction in the other animals in the garden. And when he saw her, he recognized that now we have the opportunity to procreate. He understood that he was incomplete by himself. And when she was presented to him, she saw the possibilities of man being more than just himself. My, 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 my. Thank God for the birthing process. Now, men, we will never understand how painful it is for ladies to give birth to our children. Don't say you do when you don't. But the connection that happens in motherhood happens long before the child is born into the world as a, as a breathing human being. It begins in the processes of gestation. This guy that supposedly is able to whisper to dogs and he's the dog whisperer. 
I appreciate people who know how to handle animals. But who is the soul whisperer? I'll tell you who the soul whisperer is. The soul whisperer is that mama who begins to carry. You see, guys, we can be good fathers, and we should be. But we don't know what it's like to have a baby inside of us. To have that life integrated into our own life. This is the value. Let me say this about the faith of a mama. She understands how to develop relationships with things that aren't born yet. Amen. She knows how to talk to the future. She knows how to feel after the future. She knows how to recognize the development of things before they meet the eye. But down inside, she can sense. I remember when Martha and Mary came in contact with each other, both of them expecting children. One would be John the Baptist, the greatest of prophets, and the other would be Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And when they came in contact with each other, those children leaped inside of their womb and they felt, uh, amen, a movement uh, inside of them that suggested there's something great uh, on the horizon. Does anybody feel, uh, amen, uh, amen, a leap inside? Does anybody sense that in the womb of the church, God is nurturing a magnificent end-time revival? <laughs>